All right, now we'll talk about derivatives of logarithmic functions. Now earlier we said that the derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. And of course when we learn something about exponential functions, we usually learn something about logarithmic functions at the same time. So let's think about this function, y equals the natural log of x. We're, we want to differentiate this function, that's our goal to find the derivative of the natural log function. And we're going to differentiate this with implicit differentiation. I'm going to start by taking this equation and rearranging it to say this, to say e to the y is equal to x. This is the same equation, just written in exponential form instead of logarithmic form. And if you don't see how to get from there to there, watch this. Take this equation right here, and just do e to the left side and e to the right side. So I'm going to say e to the y equals e to the power of the natural log of x. So I just exponentiated each side with the base of e. And so you can see the e to the y here is right there. And on the right side, e to the ln of x, the base e exponent and the base e logarithm cancel each other out. So I just get x. So now I can differentiate this using implicit differentiation. And what that means is I'll take the derivative of the left side and the derivative of the right side. And in both cases I'll be taking the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of the left side, I'm just taking the derivative of my base e exponential function. So the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. But y, remember, is a function of x. So the chain rule shows up. I have to do e to the y times the derivative of y. So the left side becomes e to the y times dy dx. And on the right, I just have the derivative of x, which is 1. Now my goal, remember, is to find the derivative of the logarithm, the derivative of the natural log function. And so if y is my natural log function, I'm looking for dy dx. And there it is, right there. I just need to solve algebraically for that. So I'll just come over here where I have some more room. And algebraically, if I solve for dy dx, I get 1 over e to the y. Pretty simple. And now remember that my function e to the y is the same thing as x. So I can write it as 1 over x. And that's it. That's dy dx is 1 over x. So we can sum it up. We can say the derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x. How about that? Now let's come back to our reference sheet over here and find the place where it talked about the derivative of the natural log function and that's uh, up at the top. Here the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Now let's do some examples with this concept. Here's some examples we're told to find the derivative. The first one is the natural log of 2x. So what's the derivative? Well, the derivative y primed is going to be 1 over 2x. And then 2x is really an inner function here. This is a composite of the natural log of 2x. So I need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is just 2. And you can see that those 2's would cancel. And I'm just left with 1 over x, which was the same as the derivative of the natural log function without this 2 in there. And you can see that any multiplier we put in right there would just cancel out right there, leaving us with 1 over x every time. Okay, what if we have an exponent here? y equals the natural log of x squared. Okay, well y primed is going to be 1 over x squared times the derivative of the inner function, and that would be the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this could be written as 2x over x squared, and this x would cancel one of the two in the denominator, and we're just left with 2 over x. And watch that, compare that to this next one, the natural log of 3x squared. Well, y primed is going to be 1 over 3x squared times the derivative of the inner function. 
and the derivative of 3x squared will be 6x. And again, this x right here is going to cancel one of those. So let's cross this one out and cross out the squared. And you can see that the 6 over the 3 reduces to a 2. And we still have the x in the denominator. So 2 over x again. Notice that 3 canceled out just like this 2 did. And the, x, the, the power of 2 there shows up in our answer. And there's a couple more examples here. Let's look at number 4. y equals sine x times the natural log of x. This is uh, just an application of the product rule. y primed is going to be, we've got two things here, sine x and ln x. So think about this and that. I'm going to have the derivative of this times that plus this times the derivative of that. So it's going to be the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x, times that, times ln x, plus the sine x times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. And that's it. And you could write it as cosine x ln x plus sine x over x, and that would be fine. And in example 5, f of x is equal to natural log of 4x times natural log of 3x. So again, we'll use the product rule. I'm going to do the derivative of this, and that's going to be 1 over 4x times 4 by the chain rule. So that's the derivative of that times the natural log of 3x plus the natural log of 4x times the derivative of the natural log of 3x, which would be 1 over 3x times 3 by the chain rule. And you see over here these 4's cancel out, and over here the 3's cancel out, and you can see that we can simplify this just a little bit, and we can write it as the natural log of 3x over x plus the natural log of 4x over x. And three more examples here. Number six, we're told that r of x is ln of 5x over ln of x. So r primed, the derivative, can be found with the quotient rule. So I'll do the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be 1 over 5x times 5 by the chain rule, times the derivative of the denominator, which is natural log of x, minus the numerator, that's ln of 5x, times the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be 1 over x, all of that divided by the denominator squared. And I'll write it like this, ln of x squared. And the 5's here cancel out. And over here, these x's do not cancel out because this x is uh, inside my natural log here. It's the natural log of 5x. But I can take this x here and this x here and consolidate them both in the denominator and write this in a little bit simpler form. I could write it as the natural log of x minus the natural log of 5x over x times ln of x squared. And I'll come back in the next video and work examples 7 and 8.